It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Kansas City Chiefs and the Minnesota Vikings. And it's coming up next. Spread between 4th and 6th streets in downtown Minneapolis, we welcome you inside spacious U.S. Bank Stadium. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gordon, so pleased to be joined as always by Charles Davis. A CD, these Vikings had things rolling in 2022. A 13-4 record, new head coach, an exciting offense, but it all came crashing down in another early playoff exit. And that really was because of the defensive side of the ball. They had a terrific record. Would they win 11 games by one score or less in NFL record? Got to get strong on the defensive side in order to get deeper into the playoffs. And then for the visiting Chiefs, what a year it was. A third Super Bowl appearance in four years, a second title, and it's definitely the MVP, Patrick Mahomes, that makes it all go. And just watching his development, his maturity over the years as a starting quarterback, we know about the gifts, we know about the talent, but now you add in the mental side of the game, and he controls every aspect for Kansas City. Here's the kicker, Harrison Butker, ready to get this one started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production, and the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season, his best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. They'll start on the ground with Madison. Shrugs the tackle. There he goes, right side. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Opening quarter, his opening carry of the game. And I think they'll give it to him a few more times, as they should. You're exactly right about that. With that type of a run, you want to repeat it many times until they show signs of stopping it. I think he did his visualization exercise before this one, and they're paying off. There he goes, left side. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 50 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. He's off to a great start here in this first quarter. It seems like this defense is probably going to have trouble containing him. I would agree with that. I love the observation. And here's the thing, their game plan, coming to fruition. You knew that they came in thinking that they could run it, and now they're proving that they can and doing it in a big way. Meanwhile, Cousins throw pulled in by Jefferson, and he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. So, Charles, defensively here, you're going up against a veteran quarterback. He's got a lot of know-how, a ton of savvy, but a guy who's not the most mobile of quarterbacks. What's the plan of attack? You spend all week pumping up your defensive front. Your defensive tackles, your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys who go after the quarterback the most because you know that he's not going to run and beat you consistently throughout the game. You can rush more aggressively off the edge and even up the middle because even if he evades you, he's not going to go very far. You have a lot more confidence going after him in the pocket. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down to throw Cousins. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Chiefs are going to take over once again with a football at their own 20-yard line. Uh, no doubt a very disappointing end to what was a pretty strong opening drive. They had three points in their back pocket. It was there for them. If you don't like what you see, just throw it away. Make sure you get those points on the board. Don't get too greedy. He forced it there. You saw the end result. The Chiefs offense now ready to go to work for the first time, led by Patrick Mahomes, the 2018 NFL Most Valuable Player. There's nothing the league's best quarterback didn't achieve last season. Super Bowl trophy, check. 
MVP award? Check. League leader in yards and touchdowns? Check. How does he top the season he had last year? I don't know. But Patrick Mahomes, he usually finds a way. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at the 20. Now a seventh round surprise from a year ago. It's Isaiah Pacheco. Now able to break through that initial contact and winds up getting about three there. It's second down. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. He's got this to the rookie, Rasheed Rice. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 13 yards there at a Kansas City first down. That's his first catch of the game and an impressive one against multiple defenders. And how about that start? Really aggressive. Yeah, there was double coverage out there, but that didn't stop them at all. They went right at it and defeated it on that play. Meanwhile, Mahomes throw here complete to Kelsey. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And they'll come up second and seven. They go play fake. Mahomes, short throw, hauled in by Kelsey. And Kelsey's going to have a Chiefs first down as he'll be brought down at the 37. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown out on them. Look out. You've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And that's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 31, here's a second down and four. Now here's Mahomes. Man open, that's Marquez Valdez Scantling. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 20 yard line. 11 yards for number 11. They clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4 of 4 on this opening drive. Yeah, that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that, I'm continuing to let him throw the football. Yeah, the Chiefs are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. They'll run here with Pacheco, and he is in. Touchdown, Kansas City. Isaiah Pacheco taking it in from two yards out. And the Chiefs use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. So important in this league to capitalize on the other team's mistakes. And here they force the turnover on the opening drive, then come right down and score. And I would add that it's important to capitalize on other teams' mistakes early. That way, you build confidence for yourself and your team. You start playing a little more freely. And you let the other guys know we're prepared to play.
Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. It's now second and six at the 26-yard line. Here's a give to Madison running right. He stiff arms him. 56 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. We are watching a runner having a really nice game. Carrying it very well. Vision is excellent, but boy, look at the help he's getting. Offensive line, I think they're pretty eager to block for him. Third and short yardage, Cousins. He's got his target, that's complete. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was simply snap, rock, and fire. I mean, they didn't take long at all. Slant route, and I loved where he put it. He put on the body of the receiver low so that only he can catch it. Yeah, I don't think there was any magical formula there. Defensively, that's just tough to defend. Very much so, and that way it allows the receiver to keep his body in front of the defender and not allow him to go through him to knock the ball away. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Cousins now from the 50. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs 32 yard line. 18 yards the gain for number 18. And that's how you shake off the interception you throw on the opening drive, come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. From the red zone now, Cousins. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And he is out of bounds, looks like right at the 15. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. To throw his Cousins. They'll find Osborne here. And the Vikings are going to be set up for the first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. Cousins to throw it. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. They'll throw again. Cousins. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. 
A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Vikings are an extra point away from drawing level. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads him right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter and we're tied 7-7. happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Kansas City taking the field for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now, they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, OK, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, a game a few extra. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Travis Kelsey, the Pro Bowl tight end, the intended target, and it's third down. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Throwing is Mahomes on third. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. 33 yards that time. Well, my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Throwing now is Mahomes. That is pulled in by a diving Kelsey. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Every guy that plays this game has plenty of people around him that are concerned for his health and well-being. He had no regard for his body on that catch at all, did he? <laughs> Middle of the field, diving to grab it? No, he didn't. On play action, it's Mahomes. No hesitations, they go right back to Kelsey. So just three yards on the completion there, and that'll make it second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Play action. Now it's Mahomes. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Just his second incompletion so far. He's 8 for 10. I think he'll take 80%. There's no doubt that he will, but if you're the defensive play caller, you better circle what you just dialed up on your play sheet and come back to it because you just caused an incompletion. You need a few more of those. Now it's Mahomes again. And he is caught. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
and that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. To throw, it's Mahomes. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. This will go as an 11-yard loss there on first and goal. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. Here's Mahomes to throw. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. 7-7, our score after one. The Chiefs with the football as we start the second quarter. As they'll see what they can do on third and goal. Escaping the pressure. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Illegal touching. Offense. So retract the yardage and retract the touchdown. And retract the chunk play. Big strike there to get the touchdown. Now they've got to take it back and see if they've got another one still in their arsenal. So on fourth down, Mahomes off, Harrison Butker on for the Chiefs field goal. And this a 39-yard attempt. Butker's kick here is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. This offense returns to the fold along with running back Alexander Madison. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. A big play there on the catch and run. 56 yards. Where's the contain there? And yes, that's a question because that was just a simple drop off. But he hits the Jets and all of a sudden the C's part in front of him. A huge result there to flip the field and what was a fairly innocuous play call. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Now a give to Madison. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. They had the huge play last time. Here it is a much smaller gain of two. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And here, you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart, not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. He 
In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Throwing his cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. And they're going to get him down shy of the first at about the 13-yard line. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays, and when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Peace as the kicks away. Montrell Washington on the return from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. And now here comes Kansas City. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Caught Kelsey, left side. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. On first and 10, here's Mahomes. Another pass into the reliable hands of Kelsey. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. Now Mahomes throwing on second down. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Mahomes to throw once more. That ball is caught. Marquez Valdez Scantling. The Chiefs have got the passing game rolling a bit. And another first down. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And the Vikings are going to take over here up near the 40. Boy, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback is a fool between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes, those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Following the interception, Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And they're able to work this to the 24 before it's all set and done. 46 yards on the play. Well, he worked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. 
You can see it there. He has such a handful defensively. Just too hard to keep him under wraps. It delivers a big play here for this offense. A first down throw for Cousins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Chiefs. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Well, we may not see it behind the big play sheet that they like to use, but I'll bet there's a big grin on the defensive coordinator's face. A corner blitz, what we often call a cat blitz. Usually they disguise it, Brandon. You're up on a receiver. It looks like you're going to bump and run with him, press coverage, and then he just takes off straight for the quarterback and someone comes behind him to pick up the receiver. And as a former member of the secondary, it makes you happy too, doesn't it? I can't, I can't lie about it. I've got a big <laughs> grin on my face too. That was a heck of a play, a heck of a call. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll start the drive here with Pacheco. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Second and seven. Mahomes now to throw. Looking for the out loud, and he's got more. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They'll come up now, third and three. Now Mahomes. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Chiefs first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. But we use the term pitch and catch a lot to denote an easy completion. We just saw one right there on third and three to pick up the first down. Why are those so tough to defend? Just because they hit so quickly? Yeah, it's all about timing and confidence. Quarterback sees it, rips it. There you go. Mahomes now on first down. His throw incomplete. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. And again it's Mahomes. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing is Mahomes on third. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 30. Nice play for Kansas City, picking up the first 18 yards that time. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call it? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Mahomes now on first down. That ball caught. It's Rice. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. 23 yards the final tally. Now here's Mahomes. Touchdown, Rasheed Rice, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Chiefs have moved out in front. Previous play is under review. 
did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. Butker now to add the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. And now out comes Minnesota. Right now they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard and that won't change if this drive ends like the last one when they had that lost fumble. So you have a feeling taking care of the football is certainly paramount right now. Yeah, and it's not just the guy who dropped it on the last drive, is it? That means everyone who might touch the ball is getting the same message. Guys, ball security, paramount. Let's take care of it. And if we do, we've got a chance to put points on the board. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give him a cutback lane. On each play, you have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They played that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. The free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? On third down, Cousins able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Cousins now. Over the middle and hauled in by Osborne. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Second down and a yard. Here's Madison running left. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. That was an example. Excellent defense there. They stuffed them. So now it brings up a third down situation. If I'm calling plays here, I make sure I put in the hands of my quarterback and get it to a receiver real fast. I'm not running the ball here. And he won't get to the marker as they're going to stop it for a second straight play right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Mahomes throw complete there to Rice. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Brings up second and a yard at the 32-yard line. Here's second and a yard. To throw, it's Mahomes. Open man, it's the tight end, Kelsey. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor, and it's a first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Meanwhile, the home throw taken in by Valdez Scantling. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. Shakes off the sack. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. Multiple players getting home there, and it's a loss of two on the sack. Like the footwork back there, and I thought you did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end, oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, winds up getting buried for the loss. Working from the gun, Mahomes. And that is incomplete, seven seconds remaining. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw is Mahomes. Oh, and that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Butker's kick here is good, and they double him up here. That makes our score 20-10. to 10. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a strong first half out of the running back, Isaiah Pacheco. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. All right, coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
ready for the start of the third quarter. The Chiefs have the lead and set to receive the football. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. Here comes the Chiefs offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks. For Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes a quarterback look a whole lot better. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They run it with Pacheco from the gun. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. On second down, here's Mahomes. It's Kelsey on the ground. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 38-yard line. Nice play for Kansas City, picking up the first 18 yards that time. That's another beautiful throw right there. It gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. On first and 10, here's Pacheco. And he is going to lose yardage here. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. That'll be caught by Rice. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 21. No question that they're going to continue to look his way. Six catches in the first half and now seven on the game. On first down, Mahomes to Valdez Scantling over the middle. It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five at the 16-yard line. Throwing now is Mahomes. To the right side, it's Kelsey. And the Chiefs are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Here's Pacheco headed right. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Chiefs take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Butker on for the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was finished off with a 10-yard touchdown scamper. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. 
From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. On play action, Cousins. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. Call it a gain of a yard, and it'll be second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down, this is Madison. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Play fake, Cousins. Blitz coming, and down he goes. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there, it's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out. Not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. Another drive coming for KC, and we'll see Marquez Valdez scantling once again. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Here's Pacheco once again. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. It always helps when you get great run support from your safeties, and when you get one who can actually read the play and get upfield and shut it down before it gets going, that's exactly what you're looking for. Here is third and five. Here's Mahomes to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Chiefs first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Moore, the man in motion. Mahomes taps this forward. It's a jet sweep. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's the second down and nine. From midfield, here's Mahomes. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Mahomes to throw once more. 
And this is going to be incomplete. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. Here's the Chiefs punter now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Here's Madison running on first down, and he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Throwing his cousins. And his throw is incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. A third down gain of 19. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Now fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Stopped and handed a loss by Willie Gay that time. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out. Maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. So five yards here, five on the play. Third and seven now. It's a gain of five. Brings up third and seven. So what's going on? You guys want to hear it? From the gun, here's Cousins. That is caught. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Here's Madison getting it again on second. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. And the officials here are going to pause the game for a second. Looks like there's an injured chief on the field. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Now Cousins. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Vikings first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. Oh, 
Osborne motions left. They'll go Madison up the middle, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. After seeing that, maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here. Yeah, anything, change it up, because the teams that win, the best teams, they're the ones that make adjustments. Doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done. Sometimes when you open things up a little bit, you can get back to what you wanted to do before. Cousins, meanwhile, has this complete to Madison. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And that drive was going pretty darn well. Three previous times converted on third down, but on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. The kick by Joseph is good, and that will close the gap down to 14. So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. Joseph now to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. KC's offense ready to take over. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. And now here's a throw. It's complete. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. Now a second and two. It's the Chiefs with the lead and the football here as we get set for quarter number four. On the ground, this is the former Viking, Jarek McKinnon. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. And it's straight, it's Pacheco. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now, I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. And Kelsey's going to have a Chiefs first down as he'll get this down to the 32. 
There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 47 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. Mahomes firing complete. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, normally you might say start running the football, you've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Now Mahomes. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. To throw, it's Mahomes. Touchdown! Mahomes hitting his favorite target, Travis Kelsey, on the touchdown pass. And the Chiefs have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs, and if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Extra point by Butker is on target, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Addison hauls it in. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but... Certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Brings up second and one. From the 48-yard line, here's second and a yard. Throwing, Cousins. Open man is Osborne. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down.
Cousins now from the 50. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Second and 10. Here's Cousins. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs 37. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Here's second and 10. Cousins again. Middle of the field to Jefferson. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. It's a gain of six. Makes it third and four. In motion right is Osborne. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he will have a Vikings first down, although it doesn't appear to be by much. He needed four, and he got four on third down. They had yet to run the ball at all on this drive, but third and short, definitely was a great time to dial one up. On first and 10, Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Just a gain of a couple there, and it'll be second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Osborne motions left. On the handoff, it's Madison, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of four. Now third down. It's not easy playing the corner, is it? A lot of times you got to defend against the pass, but sometimes you have to play against the run. How about the job he did there, crashing inside to make that tackle for a loss? On third down, Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be fourth down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. K.J. Osborne, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Vikings have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. All right, so this one not quite over yet. Back to a two-score game, CD. Yeah, and you've still got four-plus minutes to go, so when you think about comebacks, it's happened before. Now, it hasn't happened often, but you've got to think to yourself, let's be the next great comeback story and play this one out. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. 
If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their own 23. Here's Pacheco to begin the drive. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Marcus Davenport brought him down, the UTSA product. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. At this stage of the game, with a score where it is, the key here is to hand bounds, and he did just that. Not by a huge margin, but he stayed in. And those come up in what we like to call winning edge meetings. The things that you have to do, late game situations, kicking situations, it doesn't matter what it is, the things you have to do to win a game, and that comes up in that meeting, then you practice it, they've got to be happy to see it executed, being able to stay in bounds and work the clock. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Alexander Madison leading this Vikings offense out there to begin the next drive. Responsible for well over 100 yards of total offense, but still hasn't found the end zone. Do you think that's in the back of his mind going into this drive? It's always in the back of the mind of a player who's having that type of a day because you want that gratification for your work, right? You want that stamp on top of everything. But bottom line for him, he's doing great work. Sometimes it just opens it up for other people to actually get into the end zone for him. The runners you know, would they rather have 60 yards, three touchdowns, or 150 no touchdowns? I think more than likely 150 and no touchdowns, but all the runners that I know would say, I'll take 150 and three touchdowns. They're greedy that way. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Five yards, now it's third and five. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You can have six, seven yards, do that all the way downfield. Let's just go ahead and take the time off the clock. I think they've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Cousins from the gun on third. And the Chiefs are going to get him. The Mississippi State man, Chris Jones, with a sack there. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Chiefs will have the football back in excellent field position. But down two scores, I guess they felt like they needed to go for it. They must have thought they had a play to dial up that they could get it, and eh, it didn't work out. They must have thought, as you pointed out, they had a play, and they were probably looking at the number of possessions that they thought were left in the game. And down two scores, they must have felt like they couldn't risk not taking a shot here and giving up that chance. Pacheco gets it up the gut. And he will be brought down, but a first and goal coming up as we have come upon the two-minute warning. They'll run here with Pacheco. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Personal foul. Defense. Well, things obviously not going their way. Trailing here in the fourth quarter, and that penalty going to go ahead and give the other side some extra yardage. 
We all know it's an intense game and things can get heated out there. That's part of the battle. But bottom line, you got to keep your cool. That was not an example of doing that. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. And whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Again, it's Pacheco. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. Let's go. Get him up. Let's go. Let's go. What's the deal, y'all? A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Play action, now it's Mahomes. That's to the pylon and incomplete. And how about the coverage here in the end zone? That's how you frustrate a quarterback. You get pressure on, and you take away all of his receivers, and he's got to throw it away on third and goal. So on fourth down, Mahomes off. Harrison Butker on for the Chiefs' field goal. This to make it a three-score game late. Butker's kick here is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure, now yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Meanwhile, Cousins and a throw here caught by Addison. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. To the air again, it's Cousins. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 32-yard line. 
The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. To throw is Cousins. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Cousins. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. They'll throw again. Cousins, one last shot at the end zone. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League. But fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, so it was fun to watch from our perspective. I'd like to be those defensive coaches, though. That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan, they all scout, they all think they're prepared. But executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.